Euh, ok. So everything is working. Yeah. Okay. So I will continue what we started yesterday on the generic problem. So you you estimate a symmetric matrix plus noise. So this is a base optimal estimator for the mean square error when you are sampling according to the to the posterior. And so I'm making the assumption that so remember that. Uh, this notation is for the Euclidean uh, dot product. So in absolute value is converging to Q. And <coughs> I'm quite happy that uh, Pierre Polo uh, gave his presentation this morning because this is exactly the same Q as in uh, his matrix in his, uh, his lecture. Uh, Uh, the first lecture today. Uh, so uh, this is my on that, if you want. Uh, why I'm making this uh, assumption with uh, absolute value here is because I'm, I'm only able to show that actually the square of this is converging to uh, Q square. So I don't know there is a still a sign is not pro <clears throat> I'm not able to prove the, the, that the sign is a plus. But uh, this will be sufficient for me to, to show. Uh, so yesterday I gave you uh, uh, a proposition, and today we'll prove only uh, this part. So that's this, and that the lambda max uh, is converging to Q. So uh, yesterday I gave a. Uh, a bunch of other results uh, connecting to Q. Yes? Sorry? Yes. Otherwise, there will be a, quite a problem between the two. Thanks. Uh, so is there any question uh, on, on this? The, 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 the main goal uh, here, Uh, again, it's a kind of a, a pedagogical because uh, if you only care about the minimum mean square error, you don't really need uh, to, 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 to show this, but it gives, I think, a, a nice overview of the mathematical tools uh, that are required in order to, to understand uh, the, what physicists call their, their ansatz on the overlap uh, matrix. Uh, okay, so let's go for a, a small proof. Well, it will take. Uh, so, how much time do I, I need to stop at? At what time? Okay. okay. Uh, little bit after. So, <coughs> this. Okay, uh, so this uh, will do uh, like usual. This is uh, the same thing. So I'm, I mean, here I'm, I'm just uh, removing the bracket here. And uh, uh, you see that there is a do the dot product appearing between two independent copies. <coughs> And with, Nish with uh, sorry, uh, Nishimori, you can say that this is the same uh, as this. And by my assumption, this, is, this converts to Q square. Okay. So if uh, Q is equal to zero, then uh, the trace is an upper bound on the lambda max, so it's okay. Uh, but if Q is uh, strictly positive, uh, I need to, uh, to do uh, something else in order to prove this uh, second part. One way to to deal is to take the third moment of uh, my matrix M. This is uh, always true. Uh, so what you need to prove is that 
for this, which you can rewrite like that. So remember, this is the Euclidean, uh, <coughs> the scalar, pro the Euclidean dot product. Uh, then you take this three back to this one. You want to show that this goes to Q3 and Q3, Q squared, the, you will have that lambda max <coughs> is equal to Q, thank to the, the, the upper bound. Okay, so this is, a, you need to, to prove this and then you, you will be done uh, with my result. Uh, so, uh, this particular result is perhaps of uh, no importance, but the way we prove it, uh, I think, uh, will exhibit uh, a nice uh, mathematical tool. Uh, the, the first observation, which is crucial, uh, is a, a symmetry in, in, in this problem. So if you are looking at this matrix uh, containing the, <coughs> the Euclidean product of uh, replicas, Okay, so <clears throat> this is not a really matrix. This is a, an infinite array because you can take as many replicas as you want. Uh, IID each time with a posterior distribution. So the X1 are IID according, I, I think I called it GN yesterday. So posterior distribution given Y, so the, the observation. So this is a, <coughs> this is a, uh, what is called a, a, a random array, but it has a lot of nice property. So it's a random symmetric, clearly. <coughs> it's a positive, need finite. And it's weakly ex ex exchangeable. So we define this uh, in array. So here I need to define uh, <coughs> a little bit uh, this term because uh, I'm not dealing with uh, a finite matrix. So uh, here is a definition. So an infinite symmetric uh, random array R <coughs> is a collection of random variables. With and this uh, KK prime such that so the symmetry is obvious. So this is always almost surely. Huh? So now the definition of weakly exchangeable is the following. Uh, if you take uh, a finite n, you take a permutation, so this is a group of permutation on n elements. <clears throat> then you have this property in law. Okay, so if you look at your uh, infinite array, if you take any permutation of the n first component, uh, you need to, uh, <coughs> to have equality in law. Okay, so for those of you who are familiar with uh, the notion of uh, exchangeable random variable, uh, this is an expansion to uh, a, a 2D uh, array. So this is an uh, well, it's hard to define a permutation on uh, something which is infinite. So, yes, that's yeah, in law. Uh, and the second thing, which is uh, what does it mean to be a positive summit? It's what you expect, I guess. 
so again, you, you, t you take uh, the first n component. Well, you, you want this matrix to be uh, positive semi-definite. Okay, so x transpose. So on for any n. So do, does it make sense? Okay. So it's clear that this is true in this case. I mean, because uh, if you are permitting, these are high ID, so uh, <coughs> it's even stronger than. Uh, okay. So what I will do is uh, I will uh, cheat uh, a little bit only. Uh, here I, I have something that depends on n when n is the size of the problem. Uh, so this sequence of array is indeed a tight because all these quantities are uh, uh, bonded. So I will, uh, I will, uh, <coughs> and there are also uh, other, I mean, so this is really uh, the, ma the matrix we saw on the diagonal, you have one because uh, <coughs> uh, I did not specify, but uh, I, I take the expectation, the, the norm of X to be uh, X is on the unit sphere. So the, the posterior is still on the unit sphere. And uh, by my assumption, I have this. Okay, uh, this is exactly rewriting. Uh, uh, <coughs> okay, I'm cheating a little bit. It's not it's convergent, but I will uh, directly take. Okay, I'm saying this is a tight uh, sequence. I'm taking a conver uh, converging one, and then in the limit, I will consider an infinite array with this property. Okay. <coughs> so now uh, I have. Uh, an infinite random array, which is a weakly extensible, positive semi-definite, and satisfying this. And uh, what uh, <coughs> I want to prove is that all this assumption implies, oh, I'm, al I'm already in the limit, okay? You need to do a little bit of math in order to, to translate my result in convergence, I'm, but <coughs> Here you see that I want to show convergence. What I will show you is that in the limit, this is true, meaning that if you take R12 times R23 times R31, this is equal to Q3. Okay. Does it make sense? And R is. Uh, basically, this proof is an excuse. For me to introduce, uh, I think, a, a very nice uh, representation theorem for uh, such a random object. So, uh, you might know uh, there is a, a well known uh, uh, theorem of uh, Aldous and Hoover for a weakly exchangeable uh, array. Uh, when you are adding a constraint of being a positive semi definite, there is a uh, specific instantiation of this uh, theorem, which is due to uh, Dovbish and Sudakov. I think uh, Dimitri Pancheko, uh, I mean, uh, has a proof of this theorem basically using only the Aldous Hoover uh, representation. <coughs> So you take uh, R any infinite symmetric uh, weakly exchangeable <coughs> positive semi definite uh, random array. Then There exists a separable Hilbert space. So 
So, yeah, the theorem is H with uh, <coughs> the corresponding stellar product. And a random probability distribution eta on uh, H R such that R is equal in distribution. So H K K prime plus uh, possible term on the diagonal. So this is uh, this product here in the inverse part H and where conditionally on eta, the law of the uh, IID with law eta. Okay, so you have a, you can find a Hilbert space in which you will pick uh, vectors in this Hilbert space HK, and this is just a real number. So this uh, delta is for the Kronecker. So this is uh, just uh, on the diagonal. You 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 can uh, add a, a constant basically, a scalar. <coughs> And uh, then, I mean, clearly, uh, if you have a random array of this form, it is uh, weakly exchangeable and uh, positive semi-definite. And this is the only possible case, basically. Okay. So for Aldous Hoover, it's a bit simpler because you, uh, well, first you don't need to exhibit a Hilbert space. You can take uh, all your random variable uniform in zero one. Yes. Uh, and then uh, you have a function, that then you basically replace the Hilbert space. By, uh, you, you don't have uh, the, <coughs> uh, the dot product in your Hilbert space. You have a, a generic function that will take as argument the, your, your uniform random variable, IID random variable. Here, here there is, I mean, all the randomness is in the H, and then this is uh, the, the dot product in your Hilbert space. Ah, okay. So I will not prove this. Huh? This, this is, uh, I, I will just. Uh, use it uh, in my case. Uh, <clears throat> so again, uh, I already took the limit. Uh, so I'm basically in this setting with this additional constraint and I want to prove this. Uh, so <clears throat> what uh, we'll do, we will work uh, conditionally on uh, eta. Okay, so this uh, <coughs> law given by uh, dovich sudakov theorem. And nu will denote uh, the first marginal of eta. So nu is basically the law of the H, okay? So that uh, what we have is H uh, one, H two is equal to Q nu almost surely. Okay, so this is exactly uh, this uh, this condition. <coughs> And I'm a poor mathematician, so I don't know the sign. So I'm just fighting uh, to, uh, for, for, for a sign. Uh, so this indeed implies that uh, 
Sorry? The H is a vector in the Hilbert space. Yes, but the marginality is marginalized. Ah, for new? Uh, I'm, I'm taking only the distribution on the H, not on the, yes. I don't really care on the diagonal. The diagonal, I have only one, so this is, uh, so is, that, is that clear? Yes. Uh, the, uh, well, I guess this is a simple argument to show that uh, this implies this, because, uh, okay, uh, probably I will just draw a picture. <clears throat> so if uh, this is a sphere of uh, radius uh, uh, square root of uh, Q, so let's say uh, that uh, this is not correct. So this means that uh, you have, uh, you can find uh, H, uh, which is not on this sphere, okay, uh, <clears throat> over there. And uh, now, if you if you take uh, a small uh, ball of radius epsilon uh, around uh, it, you see that uh, the norm here is uh, let's say strictly bigger than Q. They will all have uh, radius strictly bigger than Q. And if you take any two vector here, if the ball is sufficiently small. Uh, you will uh, you will be able to uh, to have for all pairs of points in this small ball uh, uh, the uh, Euclidean product the, the dot product uh, will be bigger than Q two. Okay. So basically, uh, on this ball, you, uh, so you have a ball centered at H eight and epsilon, uh, where what I'm claiming is this. Uh, And uh, it's strictly bigger than Q, for example. And uh, now, uh, okay, if you look at the, and this is clearly a contradiction with uh, with this because this means that uh, Q, uh, different of Q is at least bigger than. Uh, the square of the boule, which is positive. Okay, contradicting uh, uh, this uh, this uh, fact. So here I'm. Okay, so uh, I'm uh, I'm almost uh, done. Because uh, now so this means that this cannot happen. So, uh, which means actually, so let me erase this, that everybody is, uh, so all the vectors in H are on this uh, sphere. So you have uh, equals Q for all, all the vectors. So let's take, say, okay, I have uh, H1 here. Uh, what are the possible value for, uh, for H2? With this constraint, which is true uh, almost surely. Yeah, so uh, my vector H1 is sitting here, I'm picking one, uh, according to my measure new. Then, so H2 has to be on this sphere. Yeah, so there are basically two points, okay, uh, which are this one. So, which means that the measure nu is concentrated on uh, at most two points on the sphere. And now, this is enough for me because what I want to show is what?
So what is the value of this? Well, uh, so this is plus or minus q each time, but uh, let's say it's plus q here and minus q here, then what is the value over there? So plus minus, which means that h1 and h2 are the same, uh, h2 and h3 are different, so which means that h3 and h1 are also different. So these two should be the same. So it's always new motion. Okay. So even so, I, I, I don't know the sign. I'm still able to, uh, to conclude that this is true, which is exactly what uh, uh, <coughs> I was looking uh, for. Okay. So, yep. Uh, I know it, it, it looks like uh, you are using a very elaborate tool to prove uh, something which might be uh, obvious to, to physicists at, uh, at least. But I don't know what to, to do. So, okay, here uh, uh, I was. Uh, so, I, I did prove only the part uh, on the infinite object, so the, the limiting object. Uh, but there is no difficulty to translate this in a, in a result of convergence when n tends to infinity. Okay, so I'm not doing that part. And I mean, uh, being on the infinite object, actually, um, even on a, on a from a mathematical mathematical point of view, uh, it's I mean, uh, it, it's it's like when you are dealing with exchangeable random variables, uh, there are some definitions when uh, for vectors, but it's it's a bit uh, cumbersome. So you need an infinite sequence in order to to deal, to, to to play with this uh, with, with this object. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> even so, I'm not able to show that uh, the matrix overlap is uh, the one you saw this morning with one on the diagonal on Q. I have a plus or minus Q. I don't know the sign. But uh, it's enough uh, to, to show uh, the result I am interested in for the minimum mean square error. Uh, and uh, on, on, yeah, at least uh, if, if you, <coughs> so it, it will be more, uh, 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 I don't know, satisfying to show that uh, you have a conversion Q, but. Uh, I'm not, I don't know if Jean has a proof now of this or not, but uh, yes, that, that's uh, you, you do. So the, the only thing we are able, we were able to show is that uh, the square is converging to Q square. So we, st we still don't know the sign. No, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, yeah, I will come. Uh, do, do you want me to to yes so exactly well you are not a physicist anymore then <laughs> no yes yeah, there, there it boils down to this problem of uh, determining x to a sign on everything and uh, for us it's a, it's a pain but uh, okay i don't know the FK model, I remember that the distribution of the overlap concentrates on, on, on the positive axis. So when you are not counting anything? So when you are not the, 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 the plane uh, Sheraton Kirkpatrick -Kirk model. The, 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 not in the inference, the, the plane Sheraton Kirkpatrick -Kirk model? Yeah, the, the plane, yeah, I'm not thinking. But, it's plane, uh, but it's, I mean, uh, the, the, the landscape is much more difficult than uh, the one I'm presenting here. So uh, here I'm basically in the replica symmetric uh, setting. I think that this is how you call it in statistical physics. Uh, if you are not in this setting, uh, you, you, you need to, to work a lot more uh, on this overlap matrix. So, I'm, what you have proven here is that the matrix is the matrix of the overlap. The, is basically what you have found uh, just this morning when we have concentration of the 
Yeah, so I I I didn't made a, 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 I didn't made a, I didn't prove anything right now because I, I started with an assumption that the absolute value is converging to yeah, Q. But yes, so this I, I I'm making the connection, uh, and with uh, we have a formal proof that uh, we can show that the assumption is correct. So in the end, everything is is correct, um, but uh, right now you you don't have. A, I didn't show you how to prove that my first assumption is correct. Uh, okay, so the, the last part uh, I wanted to uh, to come back to, uh, and this is, uh, I mean, also uh, uh, this is true for uh, in in a rather general setting. Uh, so, uh, but I will come uh, come back to the spike. Uh, I'm afraid I will only have 10 minutes to, uh, okay, let's start. Uh, then, yes, I will write it properly so that I, I will start directly with this this afternoon. Back to <coughs> the spike. So again, yes, you the invention. Okay, then uh, so again, we are observing only the upper triangular part <coughs> of this. I'm assuming now that uh, all the x are iid with a distribution p naught one iid the Wigner matrix the, the i hope i convince you that The right MMSC is not on the vector because of the problem of sign. And this is this one. Uh, okay, so this is a framework. So you you might wonder why I spent so much time uh, at the beginning presenting a Bayesian tool uh, with a, for a, a, with a, a vector and with Gaussian noise. But uh, you should be able to see that indeed I'm exactly in the framework. Uh, we use uh, in the previous lectures. Uh, you basically just need to flatten your matrix uh, X. Okay, so uh, now the number of indices is exactly uh, this, n times n minus one divided by two. And uh, so you have, a, of course, if you flatten the vector, now the entry of the, this vector, they are not IID anymore, but I never assume that uh, I had the IID component for my X vector in, uh, in my, uh, in my uh, previous lectures. What is important is that uh, the noise is a white noise, so there is no covariance, and this is still correct in this setting. So all the IMMSC theorem that uh, we show, all the, the, free, uh, <coughs> the free energy, all the computation we made, and the connection between them are still valid in this setting. You just need to rescale the, I'm rescaling the lambda with the end. So you, you just need to play with the parameter lambda on the number of components, which is not a small n now, but this uh, quantity, and you, 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 you can uh, use uh, all the tools. So what we did uh, before is not uh, lost, if you, if you want, and uh, we, uh, <coughs> we can uh, apply all, all the tools uh, I show you. So I will, uh, 
I will end this morning course with basically two, two basic facts. Uh, I, I will keep this for later. So uh, I told you uh, we are interested in the minimum mean score error. Uh, it's also good to, to look at the performance of uh, uh, natural algorithm. So there is uh, the first one, which I'm calling the dummy one. The dummy estimator is the one where you are not even looking uh, at the data set. Why? So what is the best guess you can do without even looking at the why here? So it consists of taking, so it, uh, <laughs> it will be constant or equal to <coughs> the mean uh, I'm taking uh, of this. Uh, <coughs> uh, yes, the, the entry of the matrix they are, they are square, so I'm just taking uh, the mean to the square. So I, I'm assuming also. Let's say that, well, you, you, so you, you can see. Okay. <laughs> so, what is the performance of uh, this? Uh, so, call it D, the mean square error. This is X square minus. So this is uh, the best constant estimator you, you, you can uh, make. So I'm making the assumption that this is one. Okay, so, and this is clearly uh, an upper bound on the minimum mean square error. Okay. So now I have... Uh, what I'm calling the naive PCA. So uh, all what I said, I try to convince you that uh, what you should do is look at the matrix M, which is uh, <coughs> you sample according to the posterior, you take X, X transpose, and uh, you take the leading eigenvector of this. But of course, if you knew how to uh, sample uh, given the posterior, then basically the problem will be solved. So you do not have access to the M matrix uh, I introduced uh, before. So instead, uh, you have access to this matrix. And uh, what you, you might do is uh, do the same uh, algorithm, but not on the matrix M, on the matrix Y, hoping for the best. OK, so this is why I'm calling it a naive uh, PCA. So your estimator now for X hat is a uh, <coughs> Leading eigenvector of the matrix Y. <coughs> so I'm normalizing it uh, equal to N, the dimension. And now your estimator. So, okay, we'll take a delta times this. So you are still have one degree of freedom, and we'll try to to uh, to pick the, the right value for uh, for delta. So for this, <coughs> uh, you saw uh, so I, I don't know you you call it if but the, in in math it's called the back Benarus Peche phase transition, and in in this case I will write it here. So uh, if you uh, put it in, in this setting, when lambda is less than one, then the leading eigenvalue is two. It's uh, the bulk of the semicircular law. And you have <coughs> no signal. To zero almost surely. When lambda is bigger than one, then the leading eigenvalue is square root of lambda which is strictly bigger than two. So you have one outlier, <coughs> and which is correlated 
it's a true signal. So now uh, I want to take my delta this, you do the math and it's a function of delta, two delta times zero if lambda is less than one and times one minus one over lambda if lambda is bigger than one. So, uh, which means <coughs> that if uh, you, you take delta equals zero, if I mean you want to minimize this in delta, uh, if lambda is less than one, so basically there is no, uh, I mean, in this regime, there is no hope to recover signal anyway. Uh, and the, the, when lambda is bigger than one, then the right value for delta is this. Okay. And I will write it. So this is the optimal value if you want to minimize this in delta. And so the MAC for the PCR N of lambda tends to one if lambda is less than one. And uh, this value, one minus lambda, two, one over lambda, if lambda is slightly bigger than one. Okay, so here it's uh, a very simple application of, uh, of BDP. <coughs> so you see that, uh, okay, if you, uh, in the example, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see uh, this afternoon, I will take a, a, a symmetric uh, distribution for X. So this will disappear. <coughs> so in this case, the basic symmetry is just zero, okay. Uh, so the value one here corresponds to uh, random guessing, so there is no information. And as soon as uh, you are above the, BBP phase transition, you are able to recover a little bit of signal. And this is the exact value for the mean square error achieved by the PCA. So now the question is, uh, is it the best possible, uh, is it equal to the minimum mean square error or not? And we'll see, uh, so this is a teaser for this afternoon. <laughs> so I, yeah, at what time do we? So I have a yeah. question. So, so, so is there any question on uh, perhaps? All right, what time is it? It's one, it's uh, 15 past 12. We were supposed to restart at two. Let's restart at uh, 1.30, okay? Okay, yeah, if you give me 10 minutes. Okay. So let's start again at 1.30 p.m. So for those online, we, we start earlier because we have some transportation problems here. So uh, keep that in mind. See you.